back to Madrid, though, and maybe surprisingly straightforward uh, for Real this evening, particularly for you, Damien, who was talking up Atlanta before the game and saying they were going to give it a right yeah, rattle. I was expecting I think the word he was rip roaring really, and it was well wide of the mark. Uh, the fizz just seems to go to Atalanta. They started the game reasonably well. I think they implemented what they were trying to do: the high press, hurried in Madrid. But uh, I think Madrid's tactics just un unsettled them. They came; it looked like they were stuck in the mud a little bit. Um, we were chatting off air, possibly uh, the, the Gomez who, who went to um, to Sevilla. Maybe they, perhaps they missed that little bit of craft, that bit of guile in the middle of the park. But we were just waiting for it to come, and it just never did. You know, we were waiting for that spark, and it never came. And, and in the end, Madrid uh, just saw it with their experience and, and, and the quality that they have. Albeit a howler from the keeper really set them, rocked them back in, in that first half. How much of it, though, was down to the job that Real did on them this evening? Well, I think that was a huge help. You know, they, they were by far the more comfortable team at nil-nil. Uh, the first 25 minutes, they looked like the side that were uh, mean in business. They were controlling the tempo of the game, the midfielder winning back the press from the front players was good, supported well, and it was it was uncomfortable for a period of time for Real Madrid, but you felt just before the goal came that Real Madrid were finding their feet and they knew how to deal with it better. But of course they got a great gift then when uh, when the goalkeeper Sporty Yellow makes a hames of the clearance. Although you've got to give Modric credit when, when we watch it again because it wasn't simple, just it's whacked at him, but he controls it, he brings it into a good position and then without even looking up, flicks a great ball into uh, Benzema, who had a very good game. We said he'd have an influence, good mm. to have him back. And How good are they, Real? Uh, say that again. How good are they? I think uh, tonight will give them confidence. Are they up there at Bayern Munich and, and City? No, but, but they, they, they'll feel better about tonight. Yeah, two round of 16 exits uh, in a row for Real Madrid. They are moving in the right direction again in the Champions League. And uh, Real Madrid have secured their place uh, in the Champions League quarter-final draw on Friday in fairly straightforward fashion. A 3-1 victory on the night. 4-1 uh, on aggregate uh, against Atalanta. And maybe it's a time that we start giving Zinedine Zidane a bit of credit uh, as a coach in terms of tactically and, and how he got it right with his team this evening. Yeah, you, you asked me at the, at the top of the show what, what, what would he have in store for them or what plan would he have. I, I wasn't expecting what he did with the, you know, ex when we were talking at halftime about the man for man and, and, and Furlan Mendy was down as a left wing back and kind of spent some time there. We spent an awful lot of time in the middle of the park and up at centre forward, Vinicius coming out and then Benzema on the other side and they were rotating in and out of each other's positions, which is very, very difficult when Atalanta are going man for man. So um, he deserves an awful lot of credit for that. You know, he really did stifle them. You know, the, the, the fizz went out of them after 25 minutes and I think the, obviously the catalyst was the, the goalkeeping error. But once the goalkeeping error came, they settled into the game nicely and, you know, they're so experienced that they wouldn't have panicked when they stopped. Most Teams would have stepped poorly and the one in the head, they might, a little bit of panic might set in and, and a little bit of nerves, but they didn't. Modric just dropped in and he controlled the game. I don't think we spoke about him half time, he was very, very good. You know, attacking and defending, tracked runners. And once he started dominating the ball, he was pretty decent. Yeah, how important is that, Niall? Like we talk about Real sometimes wondering maybe have they not moved on from the team that won the Champions League four mm -hmm. times in five seasons. But when you've got players like, like Modric and, and Cruz and, and Benzema up front on a night like that when maybe you know they could have got a little bit shaky after that first 20 minutes and never seemed to phase them. Yeah, I think it was an important night for them. They needed it. Uh, such players you might think you know, are machines and should play like that all the time. But when sort of a lack of confidence creeps into a dressing room, as it has done over the last couple of years, um, it's important that they, they answer it back with something strong and positive. And I think that's probably the, the, the result that you know, gives them real confidence now about what the next sort of eight weeks looks like for, for them, both uh, domestically and in this competition. Um, they're there on merit. Yeah, they, they did really well tonight I thought you know I thought it was a strong team when you have Ramos back and you have mm. Benzema back you feel that the spine of the team is yeah. good and that the, the, the others around him will respond and, and players did you know Nacho as well there's another one I'd add to the, to the group that was you know in, you know going from position to position and and they, they played that sort of roving game roving in and out of positions Modric funny enough most of the time was back to the, the holding midfielder but did it well got it and spread the ball and they they got good with Vinicius Jr I think had his probably best game and certainly in, in yeah. Champions League it was most important game that he's done well in, I think. And uh, that, that, that augurs well for him. Benzema gets a goal, he'd be disappointed he didn't get another one, should have scored with the header when he had two shots at it. Um, 
I just think for the manager, Zinedine Zidane, that's like a, leaving a load of trouble behind him mm. with a result like that tonight. And, and who knows, they could kick on from that and, and find something to, to, to maybe take on one of the bigger boys. Let's see the penalty then that, that sort of killed the tie, really. And we're going to talk a bit more in detail about Vinicius then, 20 years old, and he had probably his best game, as Niles says, that, that we've seen from him at this level of the competition. Yeah, he was very, very good here. Uh, you know, he, he gets a direct run at Toloi and he has a stab at him with his left foot outside the area and then decides to finish the job off with his right foot <laughs> inside the area. Um, and I think that if that was given as a free kick, it would probably would have been upgraded to a red card. Uh, but obviously with the new rules, now the penalty is deemed sufficient enough punishment. Um, and I think that was the end of Toloi's night. And Sergio Ramos, who has this remarkable goal-scoring record, that's his 15th now in, in Champions League. There was never any doubt with that. 101st for Real Madrid yeah, in all competitions. Yeah. That's incredible. It's not really. bad, is it? I mean, when I was playing centre back, if I put my hand up for a penalty, I'm not <laughs> sure how far I would have got. But um, but he takes our penalties, and yet you know, you just feel safer when he's in the team, don't you? You know, when you see the team sheet and he's there, you just automatically go. I think they'll be okay. As long as he doesn't get himself sent off. Yeah. What did Connor say? Twenty-six times. Yeah. But does he have that presence with them? Um, you know, like he was, he was, he was missing in in, in previous um, mm. ties. They haven't lost a knockout tie with him in the team since 2015. So for ver various reasons, he was missing in some of those big nights. You know, the one against Ajax. We remember, of course, a couple of years ago, we had the documentary crew in the crowd with him. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, you know, players like him, they bring stature to the team. They bring leadership qualities, and they bring a sense of comfort to all around. And certainly, Varane looks a better player with mm. him beside him than when he's looking at younger players and wondering what's happening. And I'm, I'm, Look, you talked about a, a renowned player there and shouldn't be thinking that way, but he just... It, it, he adds, I suppose, solidity to what, you know, Real Madrid need to, to, to be. They're, they're so surprising over the last two or three years looking at them and saying, how has it gone like this? But to claw their way back, they still rely on the old guard, on him, on Benzema. Modric was, was fantastic tonight. And when the younger lads start to add to that and sparkle alongside, as Vinicius Jr. did, um, then you start to make real progress. You've got it all happening. You've got your experience, you've got your, your guile, your, your craft, but then you've also got the brilliance and the freshness of youth. And when that comes together, you can go places. Just to mention for him, Vinicius Jr., the, like in terms of an impressive performance all round, um, we looked at him earlier in the season when he had the, the, the time when Benzema was lip red, telling one of the telling Mendy, wasn't it, not to not to pass to him. Yeah. So to come back from that and show that he still has a a place at Real Madrid and a future at Real Madrid, does that show a lot of character? An enormous amount of character because one of the, one of the senior players in the team, one of the leaders, is is apparently saying something like that about you. Things aren't going well for you. You know, the one thing you want to do when you sign for any football club is earn the respect of your your teammates first and foremost, and make sure that your teammates, you know, help you. Uh, when you're a young kid coming through, but to have something like that happen to you can, can knock your confidence. Um, but I thought tonight was his most productive game. You know, a lot of the times you see flashes, glimpses, maybe with no end product, or he might fall over too easily or choose the wrong option. But today I thought he was to the forefront. He, he travelled well with it. He had good decision making. Obviously won the penalty and was a general threat throughout the game. And I can only imagine how hard it must be. He was 18 years old, signing for Real Madrid, 50 million from Flamengo, the eyes of the world on him, to settle at a big club like that and fulfil that promise. Yeah, huge pressure and you could see he was trying ever so hard when he was getting his chance and it was all happening too quickly. He wasn't, you know, cool and taking his time. He didn't, he, he, you know, we often talk about players having ice in their veins, the big, top, you know, the very big best players. They just handle every situation. It was all hard for him in the first year or two and I see him coming out of that now and yeah. I see him becoming a proper player. Maybe he's a big player for Real in this competition. Little flurry of, of worry for them. 82 minutes gone and finally something went Atalanta's way in this tie. Yeah. It was a fine the, the, goal the, from Bure. Three outliers. They might have helped in this goal. Never saw that before. Blocked the wall from seeing it blocked uh, Courtois in goal, but Muriel spoke about him before the game. Um, he's having a great year. Now, I don't, don't think we've seen that. I mean, I'd hate to see a team try that and he hits one of his own team in the back of the head, but they, they seemed to split at the right time. That was good. Brilliant up and down. The wall jumped and he still got it up and down. Um, Courtois dived low. You know, Brian uh, uh, noticed that and, and it wasn't his crowning moment, but... That was it, really. You know, Zapata had come on and got a couple of chances as well. Um, but, you know, that free kick aside, I wonder will Gasparini be happy with how he set his team up without, uh, obviously, Zapata and Ilicic. You know, Muriel had, you know, had no support, really, till that point. And so you have, you have a, a kind of a 
team going away? Is it maybe the end of this rise that we've seen in Atalanta over the last couple of years? You know, Gomez is gone, as, as Damien said. Um, really enjoyed and played for the last few years, but tonight they were flat. Why do, yeah. just, just on a free kick, though, we, we, we're going to make the point that with those three runners, and I know Courtois was a touch late getting there, sometimes when you see something like that happen, you just hold a second because, you, you know, if, if those runners aren't there, you think the free kick's going to be taken. But when those three runners split like that, as a goalkeeper, you just wait because you think something's happening here and you need to pause and I can't just, you know, expect a shot and maybe expect maybe a through ball or some, something clever and he thought, I need to be on my toes here. I think it just held him long enough that he was just a little bit late getting there. So a clever move from Gasparini there, but was it a clever move taking Muriel off right away afterwards? Who <laughs> couldn't believe it? I mean, he, you know, he's running back to the halfway line, geez, and his teammates up, saying, "Come on, lads, let's go!" And then, you know, off the far side. Um, it, it was and then incredible. this happened. All and then, and then, it, literally way. two or three seconds later, or pretty much uh, from the kickoff, don't think the goalkeeper covers himself in glory here either. I mean. It's not the most powerful shot. What, what's wrong with goalkeepers using their hands anymore? Why doesn't he just go down with his right hand as all goalkeepers used to and get that? Yeah, I mean, look, hands or feet, I, <laughs> I, I think he should get something on that, to be honest, because essentially when he controls it, it's almost slightly behind him or level with him, so he can't get right through the ball, so he just drills it. Now, it is a little bit of pace on it and it's skidding, but I think the goalkeeper should work his feet a bit better there, uh, minimum, or get down with a hand. Uh, one penalty save for Man City all those years ago and uh, <laughs> thinks he knows everything uh, about goalkeeper. <laughs> Fair comment. I know your young lad's a goalkeeper, though, so you probably yeah, listen yeah. to a lot of it. Yeah. Um, what about Niall's point there about Atalanta? They're still battling away for... They're in fourth place in Serie A, looking to make Champions League for three seasons in a row, still competing up there. Was this, this just an off night for them tonight, or can it only be sustained by a club like that for so long? Well, I think when you're digging out diamonds in the dirt, you know, at some point you're going to... You need a steady conveyor belt of them coming through. And if you're not going to buy quality and you are digging out players to suit a certain system, sooner or later you're going to get a couple wrong and you can lose your momentum a little bit there. So it's a big year for them, you know. If, they, if the manager wants to maintain this, maybe he needs a little bit of money, maybe he needs a bigger scouting system, I'm not sure. But certainly tonight the fizz went out of him and, and, and Gomez almost certainly brought that to them over the last uh, season and a half or, you know, the last couple of years in the Champions League. He, he, all, all will depend on whether they make top four in Italy this year. You know, if they don't make top four and they lose that buzz of Champions League football, it could just all just flatten out a little bit. But if they get into the Champions League, they can re, re, re kind of up and go again. Yeah, and, and invest yeah, exactly, uh, in the squad, yeah. of course. Yeah, disappointing night for them. Uh, Real on the march again, though. After this.